there. All right, let's bring in our panelists for the hour. We're joined by retired gunnery sergeant for the U.S. Marine Corps, Newsmax analyst Jesse Jane Duff. Also with us, host of the 13-minute news hour, Bobby Everly, alongside Turning Point USA contributor and host of Rob Smith is Problematic, Rob Smith. Panelists, welcome. Uh, just got some breaking news to report. This is from James Rosen here saying that the phone call between Biden and she ended, um, just ended about an hour, 50 minutes. So that conversation has been wrapped up here, Jesse Jane. Uh, the fact that negotiations uh, do continue to end this war. What does this mean? Where are we right now? Well, the phone call to Xi to me is laughable because President Xi has no interest in benefiting the United States. And I think uh, President Biden is being quite naive to think that they will engage. You know, they are all aligned. Russia, China, Iran, even North Korea, anybody that uh, anything that is a deterrent to the success and freedom of the United States is going to be uh, on, is what they are promoting. So I don't find, uh, she will nod his head up and down, and I don't think that he will get involved in any way because it doesn't benefit him and his capabilities. But getting back to uh, arming them, why are, why are we still talking about this armament and not getting those Russian MiGs into the hands of the Ukrainians. I, I'm just really baffled by this because the conversation about a no-fly zone so that Rush, that we do not have to go in the air and fight Russian pilots, why aren't we enabling the Ukrainians to fight those Russian pilots? I mean, there's so much in disarray here. It just seems completely confusing. And negotiating what? For them to get out of the Ukraine, I hope. But no, it seems like it's always at the cost of the Ukrainian people and the Westerners that are uh, supporting the Ukraine. I'll just go down the aisle here. Bobby Epperly, your thoughts on that? The call has officially ended. Again, one of the main sticking points in a broad stroke is the call for the condemning of the invasion by Russia into Ukraine. Do you believe mm -hmm. that happened? And how powerful could this phone call really be? No, I think this phone call is an epitome of weakness. I mean, We've already seen more aggressive moves toward Taiwan from China. Everybody, all the national players are looking to Joe Biden and the United States to see what they will do from a leadership front. Look at Putin's aggression into Ukraine, and now he's setting his demands. So is this the, the new normal that they talk about, is that a nation can be aggressive, kill people in that nation, bomb cities, and then just get whatever they want, territories, declare independence. It's, it's just... It's just outrageous, and it all stems from Biden's weakness, both domestically and on the foreign policy front. She's just going to follow Putin, North Korea, and Iran, as Jesse Jane said. These nations are looking to embolden themselves because of the weakness of the United States. And these attacks do continue. Russian troops are not stopping at this point. And, and Rob, we know of that recent attack on a an area close to Lviv, which is also close to Poland, uh, a NATO ally. So how significant is the fact that Russian forces are continuing their advancement beyond just the southeastern part of the country? It's very significant, and what it really shows is that they're emboldened to continue. And I think that there's a really good point that both Jesse Jane and Bobby made about the enemies of America sense our weakness. The enemies of America and the wolves of the world um, see how weak we are in terms of foreign policy. They see that Joe Biden is a weak leader. Um, they see the, the weakness that we are portraying to the world. And when the enemies of America sense weakness, they pounce. This is what we're seeing right now. Um, it would be a very big deal if China was to step up and say, okay, to condemn what's going on with Russia and say what Russia is doing is wrong. I do not think that that is going to happen because Joe Biden has projected such a fundamental weakness. And I have to say, on top of all of this stuff that's going on, um, I think that uh, your, your previous guest made a very good point about the disinformation and false narratives that are coming out. I will be very, very wary of the information that is coming out because there's been so many things that have been reported to be true over the past few weeks mm -hmm. that have just turned out to be false. And I will be very wary of this kind of bipartisan war machine um, that is revving up coming out of Washington, D.C. about all of this stuff. I don't know about anybody else, but it makes me very, very, very nervous when both sides of D.C. Um, are so joined together in, in, in terms of something. That's just from me, from my perspective. Well, reporters should be asking questions and then asking follow-ups as well.